Welcome one, welcome all, and welcome back for another dose of Nightmare Fuel. One of the biggest names ever in special effects is Phil Tippett. His efforts contributed to the huge successes of Star Wars, Jurassic Park, and Starship Troopers. He's been a stop motion animator, a go motion animator, and a supervisor on several branches of the SFX tree. But over his career, Tippett painstakingly chiseled away at his own feature length film, directed, produced, and written by himself. Himself. And finally, in August 2021, it saw the full light of day after being worked on for 30 years. Mad God is Tippett's magnum opus, but this 30-year-old bottle of nightmare fuel has aged like a really bloody creepy wine. The world that Mad God takes place in is one of the strangest, most awe-inspiring locations I've ever seen brought to life by practical effects. And it's not just full of wonder, it's fully loaded with fear-inducing imagery and creations. I mean, come on, the opening shot is a surge of black clouds in a blood-red sky, firing lightning in all directions while engulfing a sinister-looking tower. That's how you set the tone. The story, loose as it is, essentially follows a masked assassin in a super unsettling outfit who continuously heads deeper into the labyrinth of this world. At the point we first see him descend, the surface of the world has Terminator vibes about it, with the style of spaceship scene and the dark blueness to the shading of that level of the world, as well as machine weaponry and an industrial aesthetic. But every layer of this world that the assassin travels to beyond this just gets weirder and weirder. I adore world building in cinema, and Mad God's geography is right up there with some of my very favourite dystopian futures, along with Blade Runner, The Matrix, Metropolis, and the criminally underrated Nine. I mean, look at this shot here, a desolate landscape of rock and metal, much like Nickelback's discography, am I right? With a pool of polluted water and a skull-shaped mountain in the background. Oh, it's gorgeously dark. And this is one of many shots in this film that could be framed. Also, I need to point out that the animation is flawless. It's smooth as hell and is simply fascinating to behold. Creating footage like this is so time consuming, mentally draining, and costly, but when you actually look at the finished product, I don't think there's anything more utterly incredible than practical animation. But despite all the praise I'm giving Mad God right now in terms of adoring it, it doesn't distract from the fact this thing regularly sings under your skin. It starts at the beginning and continues all the way throughout. There's a part early on when the assassin zooms into a building in the distance, and we see several puppet silhouettes in windows with rapid distorted piano music playing and a woman being stabbed to death, plus a kid watching porn, which I can't show here for obvious reasons. This gives you an idea of the madness that has taken over this world. Every living being encountered by the assassin is straight up weird, hostile, and or mentally fragmented. There's more than just people in this world, Though, there's plenty of creatures, and Tippett's designs are so captivating yet massively grotesque to the point where they all seem straight out of a sleep paralysis demon's friend list. In fact, you know what this film reminds me of? Games like Little Nightmares or Limbo or Inside. No real plot, just a person wandering through a twisted landscape, in this case of industrial mechanisms and organic matter, encountering a plethora of distorted beings while en route. The assassin is just the vehicle that guides us through it, the navigator and witness to this bizarre place. The soundscape often doesn't help the fear factor here either. There's a bunch of piercing stings like this one right here. Or reversed sounds that baffle you due to their unnatural form. I always think that effect messes with your brain and makes you uneasy. If you want some more of that kind of thing, see how long you can get through Revolution 9 by the Beatles. I dare ya. Anyway, back to Mad God, it's all like a gothic steampunk acid trip where the shadows of warped scenery and monsters lurk. That's probably the most accurate way I can describe it. And I for one adore it for that reason. It has the oddness of a Jan Schwankmeyer or a Valerian Borovshik film, combined with the poetic disturbance of a John Milton world, and architecture inspired partially by the German Expressionist movement and partially by a gory body horror equivalent of a George Orwell or Terry Gilliam society. Mad God is 
totally a manifestation of an intriguing man's mind. Yet despite filling people of all ages with happy memories in some of cinema's all-time most beloved blockbusters, this offers up a serious ying to that aforementioned yang. Mad God backs you into the dark corner of a creator's imagination, and you never want to push out of it because you learn to enjoy it there. It's like a film made by Sasha Schneider on DMT. Every single frame is expertly crafted while being simultaneously designed to disturb you. What Tippett has achieved here is instilling a similar level of dread and confusion experienced at the end of 2001, A Space Odyssey. Only in a unique world of his making, directly from the deepest, darkest pit within the confines of his mind, and uses his lifetime of skills to manifest it. Even the ending to Mad God is reminiscent of 2001, with a trippy space sequence, black monoliths, and an encased embryo. Seemed like far too clear a nod to be coincidental, and shows just how much Tippett is influenced by cinema, despite playing a hand in a lot of the art's most pivotal franchises. Mad God is a feast for the eyes, made up of food that contains far too many A numbers. Indulge in it, because you really don't see stuff like this very often. Imagine a razor-head level David Lynch making Labyrinth in stop motion and voila, you've got yourself a timeless wonder that will shock and perplex you time and time again. Pretty hard to find, but it's worth climbing into the rusty diving bell yourself to track it down, because this one is very much a visual representation of supreme unleaded nightmare fuel. If you think you can break down or find any deeper meanings in Mad God, feel free to comment down below with your thoughts and theories. And also, if you made it out of Tippett's realm of madness alive, why not reward yourself with a subscription to Unleash the Ghouls, where you can indulge in even more nightmare fuel on a regular basis. I'm Connor, the real Mad God of the channel, and remember, if it can be imagined, no matter how implausible, Phil Tippett could probably realise it.